Alright, so rearranging with context. Here we're going to be rearranging formula like we've done previously, but we have a little bit of a problem here in the sense that we just need to think about any prior knowledge that we might have and possibly just applying it to a situation instead of just an abstract equation to solve. Things they might depend on you to know would be things like the Pythagorean theorem, uh, area of a rectangle, area of a triangle. Those are important things to just kind of have in your head. But for some of more obscure volumes and and formula that they might ask you to use, they might give it to you. So in this case, they've said the volume of a cone is one-third pi r squared. You can see that's basically a third of the cylinder volume. And in this specific example, we've got the cone um, has a height of x centimeters long, and the radius is twice the height. So let's think about this. Go into our diagram. We can say that this is x for height, and the radius here is 2x. So in our height is equal to x, and our radius is equal to 2x. And I'm going to ask us to find an expression for the volume in terms of x. So what I want us to do is we're going to do some substitution. Instead of having r and h, we're going to replace that with the x and the 2x. So my volume is equal to 1 third pi r squared h, remembering that those are times squares, times between there, etc. Oops, it's 1 third, not 1 half. So the volume, if I replace it, will be one-third times pi times the radius, which is 2x. I'm going to put that in brackets there to make sure that I actually square both the x and the 2. Common mistake for people is to just put 2x squared, not in brackets, um, like this. Oops. And say that's the same thing, but if you do this into brackets, you'll see how it works out slightly different, and then times the height, which is also an x. So if we simplify this, that can be just one-third pi, and this, we have to expand that power onto both things, so that becomes 4x squared times x, and simplifying further, x squared times x becomes x cubed, so we see we have one-third pi, I'll write this out over here, is equal to, well, we have a 4 and a one-third, 4 times one-third, we can write as 4 over 3. So 4 over 3 pi, so 4 thirds pi x cubed is equal to the volume that we're looking for. So that would be our expression for volume in terms of x. So again, there's no r and no h in there anymore, we've just got it in terms of x. The next question they're going to ask us then is to rearrange that equation to find the x in terms of the volume. So here we're going to make x the subject. So Starting with volume is equal to 4 over 3 pi x cubed. A couple of ways that we can do this. Um, first thing that you might decide to do is that I'm going to leave x on this side of the equation, on the right hand side of the equation. I'm just going to try and move everything else. And because those are time signs in there, I can divide by 4 thirds and by pi. And you can divide it all in one step. So divide by 4 thirds and pi on both sides of the equation because timesing and dividing by 4 thirds pi, cancel each other out on that side. So you're left with v is equal to 4 over 3 pi is equal to x cubed. Now x cubed is not yet x, we need to get that by itself, so just like you would undo a square root, or undo a square with a square root, we can undo a cube with a cube root. So we're going to take the cube root to both sides of the equation, that will cancel a cubed, and we're left with x is equal to the cube root of v all over 4 thirds pi. And that can work for us. But I just want to go through a second way to kind of simplify and tidy up the solution a little bit, just because I know that the way they write the answers in the book aren't always the way that you will have done it. So this is okay if you get to this. But let's take a look back up one step. Instead of just saying 4 over 3 pi x cubed, let's rewrite that as v is equal to 4 pi x cubed all over 3. And that's true, that means the exact same thing as what was written above. Because of multiplicative properties, we can just put all of those terms on top of that fraction. Now if I think about it this way, if I times both sides by 3, it'll cancel my bottom. So I've got 3v is equal to 4 pi x cubed. Then I'm going to divide by 4 pi. And you can do the 4 pi in two steps if you're more comfortable with that, but I'm just going to do it all at once. So those cancel and I'm left with 
3v over 4 pi is equal to x cubed, taking the cube root of both sides to cancel that, and I've got the cube root of 3v over 4 pi is equal to x. And these two mean the exact same thing, it's just a tidier way to write that. Um, and that comes from this idea that, for instance, if I had 1 over, in this case, 3 fourths, I can rewrite that, because this is a big fraction bar, as 1 divided by 3 fourths. And if I want to do a division, it's easier if you have two fractions. So 1 over 1 is a fraction. 1 over 1 times, and flip the second, 4 over 3. And we get um, 4 thirds. Uh, <laughs> probably should have written it the other way to make more sense out of it. Our original um, fraction was 4 over 3. Let's do it that way. It was 4 thirds. Okay, so if we have 4 over 3, and f flipping the second fraction, we now get 3 over 4. And 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 4 is 4. So 1 divided by 4 thirds is the same thing as 3 fourths, and that's basically what's happened here. You can see the 3 fourths there, and an invisible 1 divided by 4 thirds there. They mean the exact same thing, but if you've got this and you're wondering why it looks wrong according to the answer in the book, it's probably okay actually, but that's how they got that solution.